First and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the great part of this state, in particular here in our state capital. I acknowledge the Noongar people, including Dr. Richard Wally, a great ambassador for Aboriginal people of Australia, nationally and internationally. My wife, Tanya, who is my rock, and a lovely Noongar lady, my best friend, and also my youngest son, Lindsay, who is here today. And he who hails Noongar and part Gija from the Kimberley from my side. And my oldest son, Jason, who's back in Broome, but both my sons were also born here in Noongar country. I'd also like to thank Mr. Robert Isaacs for the welcome to country and his kind words. He, along with Richard Wally, had seen me grow and cut my teeth in Noongar country. I thank you both. Like I said, I spent many years in Noongar country as a young man, completing my apprenticeship as a boilermaker. It was here that I started playing music and where I established Ab Music. Proudly, it's the only indigenous owned music school in Australia. I'd like to grab this opportunity to publicly call on state and Commonwealth governments to provide the proper support for this organisation to make a difference for our indigenous community. In these times of governments, state and federal, the recognition of the importance of closing the gap in Aboriginal life expectancy, mental health and well-being. It is critically important to note that part of healing is the recognition of the cultural maintenance that is striving only because of the nature of our people and who they are. Ab Music and other arts organisations have an important role to play in the healing process. Over the last decade or so, Australia has been through an amazing renaissance in Aboriginal artistic expression. This has moved through all major artistic genres, from visual arts, performing arts, theatre, music, filmmaking, radio, writing, and even poetry. Communicating our heritage and shared heritage is one of the most vital elements of this cultural renaissance. It is also about confronting the challenges of everyday life. For many reasons, I suggest the arts may be an important site to go digging in. It will allow Indigenous Australians to prosper in their own creativity if government and its servants are willing to think outside of the box. To create opportunity, economic sustainability, and most importantly, the belief that we can do it. It will assist in overcoming the obstacles of fear that prevents us from a leap of faith together. All it takes is leadership and creative visionary thinking, and a passion to see and make change. Friends, we need to heal our community, our state, and our nation. We must bridge the gap that divides us as a nation. I refer here to the neglect, the ostracization, and at times, racist attitudes towards Aboriginal people of Australia. We are kidding ourselves if we deny this exists in our state and nation. This division is also a part of all of us, in that every little bit of Australia is a little bit of you and me. I grew up with a Muslim father who was Chinese, Malay, Arabic, Indonesian, from Singapore and a Catholic mother who is a stolen generation woman with Aboriginal and God help me, good old Irish heritage. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my mother and father for shaping me into the person and citizen that I am today. A diversity that continues to allow me to value the difference we have in our community, our state and our nation. I also grew up in poverty with my brother and sisters in Broome, a town that was exempt from the white Australia policy so that the pearling industry could prosper. Even the big end of town 
was able to influence government policy about what place can be racist and what cannot be. But friends, this was about corporate control. This was about investment. This was about greed. This was about exploitation. And that was then. But has anything changed? Today, in 2008, I ask, why it's so hard for government and private sector corporations to sit at the table with traditional owners of the country. People who came from a position of poverty with no power, nothing except the capacity to negotiate a prosperous deal for all. I ask, is this in the true spirit of mateship and solidarity between Australians? Or are we happy for traditional owners to continue living like refugees in their own land? We have got it wrong for a very long time, and many people perished under these conditions, and more than a century of social experiments. I'm sure that everyone knows it is wrong, but we tend to turn a blind eye in the name of progress, development, and sometimes greed. I cry in my heart when I stand here in front of you celebrating the diverse makeup that makes me who I am. Yet, trying to love this country that's hurting its own kind. In fact, our living treasures. Why can't we see it, or do we choose not to see it? The people cry out, and institutional deafness prevails. Occasionally, good sense and compassion break through the stubborn resistance. The apology earlier this year is an example of the goodwill that does exist in this country. But goodwill and words are not enough. Early this year, I was invited to attend three conferences in Switzerland, presenting papers to the organization Initiatives for Change. This group takes recommendations from these conferences to the United Nations for possible change in the rights of human dignity. The impact that the apologists had internationally friends, was phenomenal. People of many diverse backgrounds from all over the world were literally crying when we played the DVD of the apology to full rooms, many times people asking for reruns and copies of the DVD. The profile and credibility of our nation was and is very high because of this action by our Prime Minister. I felt very, very proud as an Australian for my country to own its shameful past by apologising. We now, as a community, must take this leadership given to us and spread the healing component of this very important action within our communities and friends. This is also reconciliation. I also think of our established common law system and how integral it is to keeping good order in the community. As a whole, we should be there, the law should be there to protect and nourish the community. Having said that, I urge the government to enact strong laws in relation to violence. There must be zero tolerance to violence and anti-social behaviour in all sectors of our community. Every person in Western Australia must feel safe regardless if you are an elder, indigenous, non-indigenous, family, young people, children, mothers and fathers. Laws need to be effective in protecting people, whether it's within your own houses, in suburban Perth, down the road, utilising public transport, in the country or isolated Aboriginal community. We are failing our community and each other if we do not provide the legal framework for our law enforcement bodies to carry out their role effectively. I take this opportunity to acknowledge my son Lindsay, who's a WA police officer.